Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to the video. Now the absolutely filthy truck that is sitting beside me today is a 2002 Ford F-250 that just rolled in straight off the farm after harvest. And as you guys can see, it's a bit of a disaster. All right, well looking around the truck and this looks to be the muddiest truck that I've ever had in as every single inch of it is covered in thick mud. The wheel wells are absolutely stuffed full with a solid inch of mud and it's the same story for the wheels. Now aside from that, the rest of the exterior of this truck is just as bad, especially the underside which is completely coated from front to back. I don't know where this truck has been, but it was clearly very, very muddy. Now moving inside, and besides the floor mats that are stuffed full of dirt, there's some pretty grimy areas around the truck, along with a whole bunch of debris. But just before we dive into all the mud, Take a quick second and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos like this. I post a new video every week, so if you've got the bell on, you'll actually get notified when the new videos go live. All right, well, I cannot wait to get the pressure washer fired up and to get to work on this truck. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, well getting started on the pre-wash rinse, and this is obviously going to take me quite some time today, probably in the neighborhood of three to four hours. And this pre-wash portion of the detail is no different than when I work on the inside of a vehicle in that with a truck this muddy, I won't be satisfied until I've gotten every bit of mud that I can see sprayed off the truck. I'm incredibly thorough with the pressure washer and always make sure to take a good look around the vehicle while I'm working to make sure that I don't miss any spots. Starting on the wheel wells now, and the consistency of this mud reminds me an awful lot of the gray Chevy Silverado I did a couple of years back, except the mud on that one was frozen solid and really difficult to remove. But even though this mud isn't frozen, it's still pretty stuck on. Here it is in real time so you can see just how slow of a process this is. Moving to the wheel, and as you guys can probably tell, I always work top down on a vehicle as it's just the smartest way to do it. So once I've got all the paint, wheel wells, and wheels sprayed off, I'll turn my attention to the underside, which to be honest is probably going to take the bulk of the time today. But another difficult area is these wheels as they're so wide and have a really big offset on them, it's harder to get the barrel sprayed out. So I'll definitely be taking my time here and we'll also make sure to spray it from the other side later on as well.
Now, while I work on the driver's side wheel well here, I figured I'd give you a little background on the truck. So when the owner dropped it off, he was telling me that the mud has been on the truck for well over a month, as we had quite a bit of rain a little while back, and that coupled with gravel roads around the farm left this truck the mess that you see here. But with over 300,000 kilometers on it, or about 186,000 miles, it's in pretty decent shape and only has a bit of rust on it. And by the time I'm done with it today, it's going to look close to brand new again. Now as I work my way around the truck, I figured I'd answer this week's members question which comes from Cassidy and it's, is there any recommended PSI to use on vehicles? If so, what's the highest you can use? So as you may know, I'm currently using my electric Bertolini pressure washer that pushes 1900 PSI at 2 gallons per minute, although the biggest tip I can give to anyone looking to buy a pressure washer is to look at the PSI and the GPM of the unit. It's not always just about the PSI, but looking at them both will tell you what the cleaning power is of the unit. Although as a rule of thumb, you don't want to get any closer to the paint than you could your own skin. So if you're using a wide angle tip like I do, you can absolutely safely use higher PSI machines on vehicles with no issue. All right, well starting on the underside now, and you can see that I'm opting to just use the pressure washer today as opposed to the undercarriage washer that I usually use, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is that this truck has a pretty good lift on it, so I have far better access underneath, but also because the amount of mud on here requires me to vary the angle of the wand to get it all sprayed off, and that's simply something I can't do with the undercarriage washer.
Okay, well with the pre-wash rinse done now, I'll turn to the wheels and start by spraying on some of my Detail Geek wheel and tire cleaner. And if you're looking for a powerful all-in-one wheel cleaner, well look no further. You can find this on my website at detailgeekautocare.com. But the nice thing about this is that it's also dilutable up to 2 to 1. So if your wheels are only lightly dirty, you can dilute it down a bit and make your bottle last 3 times as long. Now, while Mike and I get this truck dried, he wanted me to tell you guys that he's not a fan of this new Blame Mike hashtag you guys came up with in the live stream over on the second channel. He said his feelings were hurt after that, so if any of you out there happen to think Mike's a cool guy and you want to show him some support, well be sure to hit the like button right now as I know that always cheers him up. Here's a quick look at the massive pile of mud left on the garage floor and yes there will be a cleanup video on the second channel soon so stay tuned for that. Okay, getting started on vacuuming now and it's pretty clear that the floor mats probably haven't moved for a good chunk of this truck's life, but there is still a fair bit of dirt that's embedded in the carpets underneath here, so the Bissell will take care of that in a little bit.
Now for those of you wondering about the quality of carpet in here, well I'm happy to say that it's actually pretty good. So that's usually one of the nice things about working on a bit of an older vehicle is that in a lot of cases they're just built better than a newer one and are easier to work on. Okay, with the vacuuming done, I'll get to work on the carpets and even though they don't appear all that visually dirty, you'll see in just a second that the Bissell is pulling tons of dirt out. So not only is that great to see, it really highlights how lighter colored interiors do a much better job at hiding dirt and dust. Moving to the back now, and this section was probably the dirtiest and the most stained, but my white drill brush has no issue getting it all loosened up. Agitation really is the key to stain removal in a vehicle, so if any of you out there enjoy detailing your own vehicle, then I would highly recommend giving my Detail Geek drill brush sets a look. Either the soft white or medium green brushes are perfect for carpets, seats, floor mats, and lots of other areas around the home too. You can find them on my website at detailgeekautocare.com. Thank you. 
Here's the half bucket full of nasty water pulled from the truck. Gross. Okay, well, I can't say I was expecting to find that sticker inside the glove box, but I did get a chuckle out of it, and like I've said before, I'll always clean inside every compartment inside a vehicle, as I couldn't imagine doing a less than perfect job. All right, moving to the leather now, and for that, I'm spraying on some Meguiar's D181 leather cleaner. Then I'll use my soft horsehair brush to gently agitate, and then I'll simply wipe it off with a microfiber towel. And then once I've got all the seats clean, I'll use some leather conditioner and apply it with a microfiber applicator pad, leaving them looking and feeling soft and supple. Now to breathe some life back into this faded and dull paint, I'm using my Detail Geek Synthetic Paint Sealant, which will not only boost the depth and gloss and leave it protected for about six months, but it will also bead water like crazy, although what I love most about the sealant is how easy it is to wipe off once it's hazed over. Okay, now with some Detail Geek glass cleaner and my waffle weave towel, I'll get to work on all the glass, and besides leaving a streak-free finish, this cleaner is also ammonia-free, which means it's safe for tinted windows like the ones on this truck. Is, 
All right guys, well 12 hours later and the truck is looking absolutely sick. There was a ton of mud on that thing. Now, just before you guys leave, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't yet. Enjoy the guitar outro and I'll see you guys in the next one.